If you're looking for a travel trailer with immense storage capacity, stick around folks. We found some awesome campers with tons of storage. Hey guys, Mike with RV Blogger here in front of the camera and Susan's behind the camera. And if you've seen us before on YouTube, welcome back to our channel. If this is your first time seeing us, welcome aboard. Susan and I make tons of videos all about RVing and we invite you to check out our website called rvblogger.com where we have hundreds of helpful articles all about RVing there as well. But in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at awesome campers with tons of storage space so stick around folks, you're gonna to wanna to definitely check out these awesome floor plans. This travel trailer is the Forest River No Boundaries or Nobo, model number 19.3. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 4,625 pounds, a very impressive cargo carry capacity of 3,043 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 7,668 pounds. It has a hitch weight of 668 pounds. It measures in at 24 feet, eight inches long, and it can sleep up to seven people. When you first walk into this travel trailer on the right hand side, you've got your sofa and Murphy bed set up. As you wrap on around, you've got your kitchen and dinette location. On my left hand side is where the bathroom's located and on my right are the bunk beds. Now, when you first walk into this travel trailer, the first thing that I, the first impression that I get is that it's small, but very efficient and somewhat multifunctional. Now, one thing to note in here is that there are no slide outs either. So that's one less thing that can break and certainly one less thing that you'd have to maintain over time. The trade-off for that though is you don't get as much floor space and your dinette might feel a little bit small, but some folks like travel trailers with no slides and no problems. Now in this one, we have a nice comfy couch right up front here. You've got an end table on each side of the couch and on top of each end table, there is a receptacle and USB ports that are available for you as well. Down below this couch, you'll notice that there's storage under here as well. And there are a couple of cargo nets that hold everything in place. There's also storage underneath of this end table with a shelf built into the center. So you've got some storage on this side and the TV location is just above on the right hand side and it's on a swivel arm so you can pull it out, swivel it around, maybe be able to lay in bed and comfortably be able to watch TV. So one thing to note here is on each side of the bed location, there are these wardrobe cabinets and these are lighted. So that's a kind of a cool feature. There's a little light switch here, but it's kind of nice to be able to see inside your cabinet. There's a bar up top so you can hang your garments, but there's a lot of storage down below. Probably goes about that deep. So you can hang your garments and still have storage underneath of them inside of this cabinet. Now to also one thing to note is that there's a top to each one of these cabinets. So you could store things up there while you're camping, but you certainly couldn't store anything up there while you're driving down the road. It would just fall off, I think. Now to open up the Murphy bed, it's a pretty simple process. You just jackknife your sofa out, pull this D-ring over, and this platform just pulls right down. And then your bed comes right down on top of that. Now you'll notice here, there's a nice big window up front and you can use either a regular screen or a room darkening screen so you can sleep at night. And there's also cubbies on each side with a shelf above so you double your storage capacity there. There are no USBs or receptacles back there, but they're right up front here on each side of the end table anyway. One other thing to note about this kind of setup is that the fold in the mattress is pretty high up on the bed. So some folks might not like that so much. So just something to be aware of if you're sensitive to that type of a mattress when you're sleeping. So we were off camera for a second and Susan brought up a great point and that is you certainly would have to leave the mattress the way it is to be able to fold it up and put it in place. But when you get to where you're going, you can easily grab the mattress turn it around the other way and then the fold will be at the bottom end of the bed instead of the top and that would make sleeping much more comfortable she is full of great ideas we have to get her doing more of these tours by herself <laughs> anyway the bed itself let's give it a quick measure um, comes in at 78 inches by 60 inches so it's like two inches shy of a residential size 
queen bed, but still it's a pretty good size bed. So here we are at the kitchen location here, and this style of kitchen is what we would call an inline kitchen. Everything's right in one line. Up above here, you've got these two nice big cabinet doors that open up and stay in place. Plenty of storage space up top. Have your attention, please. The Maryland RV show is now open. <laughs> Maryland RV show is now open. <laughs> Down below that, you have your cooktop with a two burner stove right here, and the lid flips up and down, which creates uh, some usable countertop space for you. Then they have a really, really good size, big round single bowl sink here, nice and deep. You'd be able to very easily wash big pots and pans in there with no problem. Down below that, you'll notice you've got a receptacle here to be able to plug things in in case you wanna set up a coffee pot or a toaster in the morning. And then below that, a little bit of storage under the sink. I really like this lighted spice rack here. Very convenient location right underneath where you might be cooking. And then of course, you have your microwave down below. Which is a convection, right? This is a convection style microwave down below. And you can sweep up inside your camper and sweep all your crumbs away with the central vac. So here we are at the refrigerator and freezer in here, and it's a nice big fridge and freezer setup. Very deep, plenty of room inside of here. Um, this is a 12 volt refrigerator, so it runs off of battery or shore power. Now the Nobos are set up to be able to go off road and do some boondocking. This particular camper comes with 190 watts of solar, a 2000 watt inverter, and we get questions all the time from people about, hey, can I use my 110 watt receptacles in my RV while I'm on solar or battery power? Many RVs, you can't. It's just not wired that way. But in this RV, they've wired the electrical receptacles in here so they will run off your battery. So if you're out boondocking, you have that convenience as well. It's a very nice setup. Just past the refrigerator, you have a very large pantry cabinet here. This actually has a mirrored door on it, so I guess you can check yourself out before you go hit the hiking trails in the morning. So here I am at the dinette table, and to be honest, this, you know, this dinette can only really sit two people, and you can sleep five people inside of this camper. So like I mentioned earlier, since this doesn't have any slide outs, one of the trade-offs for that convenience of not having to maintain or deal with any problems that a slide out might cause is your dinette gets a little bit squished. And that certainly is the case here. But for two people to sit here comfortably, hey, it's big enough for that for sure. Now this table will also drop down and create another bed. And if you were to do that, this bed is about uh, 70 inches long and about 30 inches wide. So I would say a kid would be able to sleep here pretty comfortably. I like the nice big window over top. And I also like the fact that the dinette on this camper is on the camp side. What I mean by that is this is where your camping is all gonna be set up, right? Because your door's on that side. So if you're sitting here, you'll have a nice view of your picnic table, fire pit, your chairs are all out there. It's just a great set up to have your dinette on this side of the RV. Now you'll also notice there's three big storage cabinets overhead. It's really one big cabinet here. So you'll wanna be able to use bins or something like that for all of your storage so things don't go flying around in your cabinets while you're driving up and down the road. All of your controls are mounted up here as well. And there are a couple of lights here and there's a receptacle mounted up under here on the one end. So if you're sitting here at your dinette table, You've got your computer open or whatever, you could easily plug it in and stay powered up. Now there's a little bit more storage underneath of this one dinette booth on this side, uh, but not on the other side. Now, here we are at the double-double bunks in the back of this camper. And I say they're double-doubles because they're double-wide bunks. Now this bunk measures at about 74 inches by 44 inches. Uh, they don't have a sticker anywhere in here that mentions how much these bunks can hold. Normally, they'll hold anywhere between 250 and 300 pounds. I would imagine these are the same. You could look it up on the manufacturer's website. We have no cell signal here at the Maryland RV show, 
So I can't use my phone to find out what the specs are. Very often they don't even list them on the manufacturer's websites anyway, so it's kind of hard to tell. But I will point out that with these double bunks, they have three out of four of the main features we look for in bunk beds. First of all, they each have their own window, they each have their own light, and they each have their own set of USB ports. They do not have a receptacle, but that's okay, I think, as long as you've got the USBs, the kids can sit up here, have their tablets, their phones charging while they're, while they're laying and getting ready to go to sleep at night. There's also storage underneath one side of the bottom bunk, but these bunks are set up in a very unusual way to greatly enhance the storage inside this camper, and we'll show you that feature when we work our way outside. Now, here I am inside the bathroom, which is all the way in the back of this camper, right next to the bunks next door. I'm standing in the shower, and I always do this because in a camper, the shower is always raised up off of the floor to allow the drain to be able to work properly. That's why I always measure the ceiling height inside the shower, because you're not standing on the floor, you're standing up about in this case, about six or seven inches off the floor. And that's why you'll see the manufacturers also install skylights in the shower. It's to give you additional headspace because you're not standing on the floor below. Now the headroom in here from the shower floor into the skylight is about six feet, four inches, where the total headroom just anywhere else in the camper would be about six feet seven inches so if you're taller than six four you might have to crouch down in here a bit but that should be tall enough for most people i would think now this shower feels like it's a pretty decent size it's got a couple or a few corner shelves for your shampoo and soap and then of course it's got a separate sprayer that pulls off that you can use now they do kind of have a shower curtain in here but it's on a track so that definitely helps to keep the curtain in control so it doesn't blow in and stick to you and the track itself curves out and into the room, so it creates a little more room for you inside the shower. Now Susan's standing in the shower, and I'm standing near the doorway to the bathroom, and you'll notice that you've got a nice medicine cabinet over top with a sh shelf built in, and then a little bit of open storage down below. There's also, you know, a little bit of countertop space with a decent sized sink. There is a receptacle off to the side here for your blow dryer or shaver. And then you've got open storage and cabinet storage below the sink. Here I am sitting on the commode and even with the door closed, this bathroom passes the elbow test with flying colors. Now, as we all know, in a small travel trailer or any travel trailer for that matter, storage space is usually not sufficient. Uh, but in this particular camper, they came up with some creative ideas to help out with that situation. And what they did is they installed a good sized door here. And this goes into the bunk area where we just were. And inside here, this bottom bunk folds up and out of the way. It'll latch into place. And then you've got this nice big door to put all your camping supplies in here. You could put chairs, grills. You could probably even squeeze a bike in here, no problem. You've got all this additional storage to make your camping really, really convenient. This travel trailer is the Keystone Bullet Ultralight, model number 312BHS. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 6,864 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,736 pounds, for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 8,600 pounds. The hitch weight is 785 pounds. It measures in at 35 feet, 9 inches long, and it can sleep up to 10 people. When you first walk into this travel trailer, on the left-hand side, you have the back of the trailer, which includes a huge storage area, bedroom, reclining area, living room. Then we wrap on through the entertainment area into the kitchen. And then behind me here is the bathroom and the owner's separate bedroom. Now, when you first walk into this travel trailer, my first impression is, man, this thing is huge. It's got tons and tons of space, lots of storage space. This whole entire area straight ahead slides out. It's about a three foot slide. So your dinette and your living room sofa both slide out, which gives you a lot of, of floor space in here. Now, just to the left of me is the very back of this trailer. And the first thing you'll notice is this big door on the back of the trailer. And that allows you to open it right on up, just like that gentleman did, <laughs> and store all kinds of things in this area. And why is that? Well, it's because this queen size bed is on a track 
that can raise up and down and create all of this wonderful storage space. Now, instead of having a lower bunk in a fixed position, which would ruin all your storage space, they have these really nice cushions here, which as you see, can lay out and create another bed space. But the queen size bed up here is an actual full residential style size queen bed, which is unbelievable. Now also in this area, you have a little TV and then you've got storage in the hutch area all around and behind the TV location. So just to the right side of the entry door, or the rear entry door, I should say, because there are two, is another entertainment area. And this area, you can take this TV, swivel it out, and be able to watch TV from your sofa or also from your dinette. Down below here, we've got some really nice cabinetry built in with plenty of storage space down below. So here I am in the living area sitting in this nice comfy couch and a couple nice things that you'll note here, it's in a perfect position to be able to watch the TV straight ahead. And the couch also is very comfortable. It's got a couple of cup holders here and you can pull these little levers and they recline a little bit so you can relax and watch the TV. Now these recliners don't really go back very far. We've seen some other models that do and I kind of find those more comfortable than this style where you're sitting more straight up and down. Now, a couple of other nice features are on the ends, which are called armrests, <laughs> which I momentarily forgot. They both raise up and there's a little bit of a storage space in here. And of course, in the center console, there's more storage space for all of your remote controls. So just past the living and entertainment and storage area is where your kitchen is in this camper. It's in the middle of the camper. And so, first of all, it's an L-shaped kitchen, which is a fantastic design. It gives you a little more extra countertop space that way. First of all, you'll notice that you have your refrigerator here. This is a 12-volt refrigerator. It runs on a compressor. It's not the old style of propane gas. So this runs on either battery or shore power. It's very efficient, and it cools much faster than the older styles as well. Now, up top here, we have a microwave oven. And then that wraps around into all of these really nice big storage cabinets up top. So you've got plenty of space up there for all your storage needs. Down below here, really, this is a fantastic size kitchen sink. It's really humongous. It's got a nice big gooseneck faucet overhead. And then, of course, you have a tower of power here in your countertop. This gives you a couple of receptacles and a USB plug. So if you have a toaster or coffee pot or air fryer, crock pot, whatever, you can put it up here, plug it right in. It's very, very convenient. There's also a nice window over top. And I really like the backsplash here with the oversized subway tile. It looks very, very nice. Now, down here, you've got a three burner stove. But I do want to point out one thing. Most campers, or a lot of them, do have a backsplash installed, but they always forget the cabinet wall over here. So if you're cooking something that splatters and it gets on your cabinet, that could be a problem. So you might want to put a cutting board here or maybe get some peel and stick tile and put it on the side of this cabinet to help protect that area. Now down below your three burner stove, you've got a real oven down here. So if you want to throw a pizza in and enjoy that, you certainly can. Then below that, we have even more storage space for all your pots and pans. Finally, we have a bank of four drawers here, and these are really good sized drawers. You can fit all of your kitchen utensils in there, and then you've got a little bit more storage under the kitchen sink as well. And finally, if you need more countertop space, there is an extended countertop right here on the end. Now, right across from the kitchen is where the dinette is located. And most of the time, these are in the table position and I can sit down and show you what that's like. We're at an RV show right now and the dealer happens to have this into the bed position, but that's fine. I mean, you can see it either way. This way you just get to see when it's converted into a bed. If it was in the table setup mode, you would be able to sit four people here very, very comfortably. But since it's in the bed position, Let's measure it up and you have about, oh, about 70 inches of space in here. So about five feet, 10 inches. And then it's about 40 inches wide. So I would say an average height adult could sleep here. Definitely a kid or two would be comfortable enough sleeping here as well. Also, this is all in a slide out. It's got four nice windows here so you can get plenty of ventilation and light in here. All the shades are drawn right now because the RVs are about this far apart from each other. So 
if the shades were up, you would just see the next RV right outside the window. Nonetheless, you got plenty of window space. Two last little features about this dinette. One of them is that it's got storage space underneath both of the dinette booth seats. And then finally, in this back corner here, there's a couple of USB ports. So here we are in the front of this trailer, which is where the owner's private bedroom is located. Now this bed looks to be, I think it's pretty close to 80 inches. Well, it's 78 inches and it is 60 inches wide. So it's just two inches short of being considered a residential queen size bed but we would have to consider this really an RV queen or a short queen because it's short by two inches. All around the bed, you've got this nice cabinetry here. And on each end, you've got mirrored wardrobe cabinets with a bar inside so you can hang your garments in there. Down below, there's two drawers that pull out for additional clothes storage. And then at the head of the bed on each end, there are a couple of cubbies with a shelf above for additional storage. Each has two receptacles and two USB ports so you can charge up all your electronic devices. Also, I want to note on this side of the bed, this little lid flips up. You can put a basket down below there and you have a little laundry chute right here in your bedroom. And underneath the bed, you can lift up the mattress and find even more storage. Now there's a few more features in this bedroom to point out. One of them is this is where your TV location is and you've got your receptacle and cables up here. I'm not real happy with this spot. The problem with it is you have to, you can only put a really little teeny TV in here because the door will slide over this far to come into the bedroom. And on the other side, you know, you've got a nice big cabinet here for storage. So it really limits the size of TV. I think they would be better off putting the TV behind where Susan is shooting because you could get a much bigger TV put it on a swing arm and be able to lay in bed and watch a larger TV. And then finally, behind me here, there's an entry door that comes in, which is great, because if you have kids that are sleeping out in the main area or in the back of the camper where that other queen size bed is, and maybe you wanna stay out late, you know, hanging out by the fire a little later in the evening, you can just come right on into your bedroom, go right to sleep without disturbing anyone else. There's also a nice little spot underneath of this cabinet to kick your shoes and have a little bit of shoe storage. So here we are in the bathroom, which is located between the kitchen and the owner's bedroom. And as usual, I'm standing in the shower. And uh, when I'm standing in the shower, let's get a good, good headroom in here doesn't really have a skylight, but there's about six feet, three inches in here. So if you're taller than that, you're gonna have to kind of crouch down a little bit in here to take a shower. Now this shower is a little different because it's got a bathtub down below. So if you have little toddlers and they like to take a bath, then this might be a perfect setup for you. Now this also has a shower curtain installed. And as you guys know, I am not a big fan of shower curtains. This is a really long curtain going to lay inside your tub. It's going to get all wet, stick to you when it blows in on you. Um, I'd really prefer to see like a uh, retractable shower door in a situation like this, but don't let that keep you from buying the camper. You can buy a retractable shower door, install it yourself. It's a piece of cake and get rid of the shower curtain. Now outside of the shower, we've got a really good size medicine cabinet here. Down below that, we have a nice sink vanity with lots of countertop space and a receptacle above, and then additional storage down below. Just to the left of the vanity, there's a really nice linen closet here right in the bathroom, which offers plenty of space for all your towels, sheets, whatever you need bathroom-wise, plenty of storage. Here I am sitting on the commode, and as far as the elbow test goes, we are 100% looking good. This travel trailer is the Ember Overland model number 221 MSL. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 5,680 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,315 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 6,995 pounds. The hitch weight is 655 pounds. It measures in at 26 feet, one inch long, and it can sleep up to six people. When you first walk into this travel trailer on the right hand side, you'll notice the living room couch and the Murphy bed setup. It wraps around into the area where the dinette is located, which also serves as a couch and a bed. Finally, we have the kitchen area on my right. And then behind me, we have double double size bunks and the bathroom. Now, when you first walk into this travel trailer, my first impression of it is that it's nice 
and roomy for a smaller travel trailer and it just feels really nice and big in here now part of the reason for that is because this couch and dinette area is in a slide out that gives you an extra few feet of floor space in here and the other big reason for it is because of the murphy bed set up here in the front of the travel trailer now you'll notice there's a really nice comfy couch right here and this also can jackknife out and become its own bed but you could also use it as a Murphy bed by simply pulling down on the handle up top <clears throat> and lowering the Murphy bed. Now it's got this bar here, which you just lower down and it needs this just to help support the end of the mattress. So you just fold that right out. Sheet stays on there pretty well and you've got a nice size bed here. Now I think this looks to be a short queen and it is, it's 76 inches long by 60 inches wide so that would be considered a short queen size bed in here but it's got a great uh, location to it and um, it's got all these built-in cabinets all the way around it so on each side first of all you've got a wardrobe cabinet with a bar up top so you can hang things just below that you have a drawer that pulls out on each side and then in addition to that you've got these three storage cabinets up top here now we're, while we're up in this area one other really nice feature that i like on this trailer is it's got this window overhead so you can look out at the night sky you can close the screen or you can go the other way with the screen and just black out totally so it's a very very nice very well done window system in here much like you'd see in the new camp trailers so it's got a very high quality to it as well also you'll notice in the towards the head of the bed there's a little cubby on each side, so you can store additional things in there as well. And then on the front side of the cabinetry, it has a nightstand on each side of the bed. It's certainly big enough uh, to store your phone, your computer, um, CPAP machine, whatever you need. And then there are also receptacles on each side of the bed. And on this side of the bed, there are also a couple of USB ports. Now, where's the fold located in the mattress? <clears throat> Where's the fold located? Yeah. Right about here. And so the nice thing about where the fold is located is that it is below your where your hips would be located when you're laying on the bed. So you're not gonna have the fold interfering with where your lower back would be located. It's below that. So it's in a pretty good location. Uh, and it does help to fold up and stow away this mattress. Now you'll notice in this trailer, there is no dinette in here. However, there are two eating areas. One of them is on this couch and the other is on the other couch. And as you can see, it comes with a really simple system to set it up. These just simply pull apart because one piece slides into the next and this piece just pulls right out as well. It's a very nice setup, very, very easy to put it together and then take it back apart again so you can stow it when you don't need it but both couches serve both as a couch and a dinette and as you'll see in a minute a sleeping area too so here i am on the couch which would be considered more of the dinette area but this really serves three purposes as well like i mentioned it's a couch you can put your dinette table here and then you can remove it and this actually becomes a jackknife sofa and i'll show you how that works you just pull up on the bottom a little bit, let it rotate out and let it lay flat. So uh, one person could very easily sleep here, maybe two little kids, but I would say one person would be better. Now you'll notice on each side of the couch, there's a nice cup holder located there. And then behind the couch, we have these two storage cabinets that are nice and deep. They're probably about 16 inches deep. Uh, very good size for storing things. There are also a couple of USB ports right in the middle. So if you're sitting here on the couch, you can plug in your phone or your tablet or whatever. There's also a nice big window behind here, which also has these fantastic shade system that they have set up. And then above here, you have all these cabinets to have even more storage over top. Now, all the lights in this camper are put together really well. They actually all turn on and off individually so you can set your lighting in here however you would like it to be most campers you flip one switch everything comes on this camper is a little different where every single light can be turned on and off individually 
Now, speaking of dimmers and how things light up in here, one really, really cool feature in this trailer is it has a little motion sensor for your control panel because this control panel lights up. As soon as you put your hand in front of it, boom, it lights right up for you, which is a terrific feature. I know I wish we had this in our RV. We don't even have this in our Class A RV, and it's just a really nice, convenient feature to have. And then right next to that is where your dimming switch would be. So you just simply lower the switch and you can dim all the lights together or raise it up and have them on full power. Now, just next to the couch that would be kind of in the middle of the camper in the slide out is where the entertainment center is located. I think this is probably the best place that they could mount the TV in the entire trailer. Uh, it does seem to work here. You can see it from both couches or if you're laying in bed at night. And then you've got this nice countertop area here as well with a receptacle below that that you could use from your couch or I don't know, put your coffee machine here or something here that, that needs to be powered. You can put your tablet, computer, phones, and recharge them overnight. Underneath of here, there's ample storage, which is very, very deep, a couple feet deep underneath. And then up top, we have three more cabinet doors that all open into one very large cabinet. Now, here we are in the kitchen area, and if you've seen any of our videos before, you probably know this is an inline kitchen. And what that means is that all of your kitchen appliances are in a line, which is a very, very convenient way to set up your kitchen. Now, on the left-hand side, we'll start off with the side of the cabinet. There's a couple of receptacles located on the side wall of the cabinet, so it's a very convenient spot for plugging things in. And there's also a receptacle on this side of the countertop, so if you're gonna set up a toaster oven or a toaster or a coffee pot you can plug in right here very very convenient you'll notice there's also a very large round deep single bowl sink in here which i love that's a great size sink and then of course you have your countertop cover to give you extra countertop space it has a good size gooseneck faucet over top and then this has a inline two burner stove as well. And I love the fact that they have one burner in the front and then one behind it, because if these were side by side, you would lose all this countertop space over here. So it's very, very well done. Of course, you have your window over top of your countertop with this fantastic screen method that they have built in here. And then up top, we have a regular microwave oven and a couple of very good cabinets on either side for additional storage as well. Down below here, there is lots of storage under the kitchen sink. Also, even more storage under your countertop space. And then they've put three drawers in the center that are fully extendable for all of your kitchen utensils. Now, right next to the kitchen countertop is where we have the Furion refrigerator in here. Now, this is a 12 volt refrigerator. What that means is, what the advantage of it is, is that this refrigerator runs off of a battery or shore power. It does not run off of propane. Uh, and that means that this refrigerator has a compressor built into it. And it's the advantage of a compressor is that the refrigerator will get cold much faster. It's much more efficient to use. I know we have a propane powered refrigerator in our class C RV. It's an evaporation type refrigerator rather than a, condens a condenser or compressor style refrigerator. And so it takes forever to get cold. We have to turn it on and plug everything in the night before we want to leave. So it's got the whole overnight to get cold where these compressor style fridges get cold much, much faster and they stay cold as well. And uh, so it also gives you a, a more space inside of your refrigerator and your freezer because you don't have those fins that are located inside the refrigerator. So you get full use of all the space. This fridge is 10 square feet, so it's a very good size refrigerator for this size travel trailer. Now, just past the kitchen area at the back of this trailer is where these double bunks are located. Now, each one of these bunks can have up to 300 pounds of weight on it, which is pretty good amount of, of uh, weight for storage or for people to sleep on here. And when we look at bunk beds, we pretty much evaluate them that they need to have four things to be what we consider a very good bunk bed setup. First of all, they need to have a light, they need to have a window, they should have a receptacle, and they should also have USB ports. And these bunks 
have all of those elements back here so you're in great shape for anyone to sleep back here and be very very comfortable now one other really neat feature about these bunks is that this is also a storage area and ember has gone ahead and made this really neat design where they've got tracks along the wall on three sides of these bunks and you can fully adjust where you'd like these bunks to sit you can raise them up really high you can raise them down almost to where my knee level is on the floor you can pull them both all the way up to the ceiling and have all kinds of storage space under here so it's a very very cool setup i've never seen it before but i really think it's versatile and it allows you to get larger storage items in here like chairs bicycles all kinds of stuff um, that you need to store in here so you can have a really great camping experience and it's got one other really cool feature I know you're going to want to see but I'll have to show it to you outside now here I am in the bathroom which is also all the way in the back of this trailer just next to the bunk beds next door and I gotta say this bathroom feels very very large and spacious now I'm standing inside the shower as you guys know I'm 5'11 and inside the skylight area there is about 77 inches of height so about six feet five inches inside the skylight the normal ceiling height in this entire camper is about six feet six inches tall so good amount of headspace throughout the camper now when i'm standing here in the shower i really like this surround that they've installed it just looks very very nice i think this is an acrylic finish so it's lighter but it looks like tile and it's got that glossy finish to it looks very very high end it's got a nice shower head and then of course your on and off valves here too now ember's gone ahead and installed a retractable shower door which is awesome because you don't want to have a curtain here sticking to the side of you while you're taking a shower overall the shower's a little bit on the narrow side so you might stand sideways in here while you're taking a shower but i don't really see that as a big inconvenience at all now just outside of the shower we have a nice window up top here and it's got a shade system just like in the rest of the camper so you can go blackout or screens you can open up open both of them and open your window and close it and all that good stuff down below here there's a little handle to help you get in and out of the shower there's a towel ring and then of course we have all this open storage below here and then next to that we have our vanity area with a nice big storage cabinet below a good size sink here there's also a receptacle located over top of the sink which is perfect for plugging in your blow dryer shaver whatever you need and then it's got a very nice lighted medicine cabinet the light is around the edges of the medicine cabinet so it's a softer light where i guess if you're in here and putting on your makeup or whatever it gives you that softer light so you ladies might really like that overall though this is a really big bathroom feel and of course when i sit on the commode i am passing the elbow test 100 percent now we mentioned inside that under the bunks is a fantastic storage area it actually has two ways that you can get to all the storage from outside of the trailer one of them's on the back of the trailer and the door opens and you can access some of your storage from this location and then the other spot is just around the side of the trailer so here i am on the side of the trailer and look at all of this open storage area that you can get to underneath of the bunks that are inside it's got this huge door that opens you have full accessibility here to get to all of your stuff and a really cool feature that this camper also offers is it's got a screen built in here so you can lower the screen you can sleep in your bunks at night have that nice air feel in here while you're sleeping away get a great cross breeze and it's just a really great well thought out design for accessing all of your storage and creating a screened off area for sleeping at night so while we're outside this camper i also want to take a second and just point out that this is part of their overlander series and so these campers are meant for boondocking and going off road you'll notice that it's got the dual axle setup it's got the kurt upgraded suspension in here and the amount of ground clearance that it has is really key that's what you look for 
uh, when you're looking for a camper that can go off-road and this has a great amount of ground clearance. Hey guys, let us know which one of these campers you like and why in the comments down below. And remember, we're not the only ones that read the comments. The manufacturers go through and comb through those comments too to make create new cool floor plans and designs in future RVs. Speaking of cool floor plans, if you'd like to check out some more RVs with awesome floor plans, just click the box down below and Susan and I will see you in the next video.